Yeah, headquarters. Good luck, buddy. Tell headquarters I said bye. I will. What's going on, Mr. Yash? You got the wheels? Yeah. <laughs> we came prepared this time, hopefully. Yep. All right, fixing the flats over here. So I got a puncture in my tire because the liner wasn't covering the spokes. Gotta get that fixed. Okay. And uh, this stuff is a lot nicer. It sticks also. Okay. Uh, we ran out of uh, ran out of it for this little area, so I'll have to go to the bearings and get some more. Okay. And you know, it came with. Uh, it came with that the, gray one that he showed you. Yeah, I don't know what happened to it, but it, he said it was too loose. It was loose. Yeah, it stretched out and didn't cover it up. Right. But uh, yeah, as soon as we get that all covered up, okay. Put the tube in and everything will be good. Okay, and he had to go to a third. Here it is, right here. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, we're going to have to go next door to Bearings, just the hardware store, and okay. get some more of this stuff. Oh, Gorilla Tape. Yeah, 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 yeah. I hear, I hear that they do that on the tires, too, sometimes. On the... On the outside? Well, not the outside, the but... Inside, yeah. Yeah, yeah that's, that's exactly what we're doing here. Well, on here and then inside the the actual, like... Oh, oh over the tube. Yeah, yeah like, yeah, so yeah. the thorns and stuff. That protects it a little bit more. Yeah. But this is cool. As long, long as I don't get any more flats, I mean... No, like, that like, should, that should take care of it. Right. Like I said, I only had to bike two days and <laughs> get a flat. Oh, the back tire doesn't do me like that. So. Yeah, I, I, it has the same rim strip that the front one does. So, so yeah. yeah. Hopefully it's the, fine. Maybe. I'll get another. I guess so. Give me another tube just in case. Okay. So, when it happens. Uh, we got another bike shot. over yeah, here we're working shot. on. Um, yeah, I'll take a look at that. Trick. Sometimes, sometimes it's kind of like that. So, as y'all see here, these spokes can penetrate the tube. Like in my case, these tires, from what y'all can tell, are pretty true. Uh, okay. Good. All right, quick note. My spokes are giving off a creaking noise now, and when I hand checked them, they are a little loose, so I'm about to take them up, my bike up to a local bike shop. I don't know about the front tires. They don't have as much weight and torque on them as the back, but definitely my rear tires, they hear that creaking noise like they rub together, so. I'm gonna take it to the local bike shop and they will, it's even worse when I'm riding it, and they are going to tighten them up. I don't think my rims out are true or anything, but I just don't want this to get worse. So that's why I'm taking it in and um, get it checked out. I've had my bike close to three months now, two, two to three months, and got over 500 miles on it. So yeah, um, that just happens, I guess part of the maintenance and as you can see my tires are worn down because I really do ride this thing every day I can like I feel the weather's bad it's raining or something like that and I don't get to ride I'm really upset because like this is my one of my main modes of exercise and I just love riding this thing it's so much fun all right Shop now. Got the XP on the stand, get it up there. When you're doing this process, what do you look for just to see if it's out of line or is Yeah, most of the time we get to take this off and kind of put it on the machine and make okay. our life a little easier. Uh-huh. Since you have a special bike, we have to do it 
a little different. Kind of eyeball it. And so right now I'm just tightening each spoke okay. a half a turn. Okay. To keep it straight, but also to get more tension on the spokes. Okay. Now, being that this has a motor on it, I guess the torque eventually is just gonna make them come loose over time. Yeah, as well, and it's probably it was made in China. Yeah, it was, <laughs> of course. They, and did they put spoke prep on it? Did they I have no clue. tension the wheel then? I mean, yeah, there's no telling. Yeah, obviously the motor is going to make a difference. Okay. Now with it having shorter spokes, uh -huh. then that does make it a stronger wheel mm -hmm. than if the wheel was normal size. It doesn't? It makes it oh, stronger. Oh, it makes it strong. Okay, okay. That makes sense. Okay. And I think they're like heavier gauge than most average wheels. A little bit, yeah. yeah. They're not super heavy gauge. Okay. But at least they're brass nipples and not alloy nipples. Okay. That's, That's good. just for string. And I think but the ones if you use alloy nipples on a motorized bike, uh, that's crazy. They'll just tear them up over time? Well, alloy nipples just, especially down here, just corrode too quickly and they don't hold as much. Oh, and again, okay. the reason for alloy nipples is by the time's color uh -huh. or to make it lighter. I see. Yeah. And these are? These are brass. Brass, okay. That's good to know. And they all kind of lose. <laughs> yeah. yeah. I noticed when I was. And that's the reason why the wheel's still straight. Ah, uh, okay. If they weren't all loose, uh -huh. then the wheel would be going all over the place. Yeah, or at least a little bit. Okay. I first heard the noise maybe a couple of weeks ago, but it seemed like it worked itself out. And, and I heard it again like two days ago when I was riding and I'd stop and get off and I looked at the bike and I was like what the hell is it coming from I couldn't, I couldn't localize it I thought yeah. you know someone was hitting the tire maybe but that one thing that I figured out I was like oh the spokes creaking and popping so. Did you find some shops wouldn't work on this because it's an electric bike? Um, not necessarily, but I've heard, you know, online, YouTube and everything, there's a lot of bike shops just won't look at electric bikes. Um, I had a flat and another one repaired the, the, the tube for me, replaced that. And I just, you know, when I had the flat, I just want to make sure there wasn't anything wrong with my tube. That's why I didn't just put it in it myself. And uh, the liner was bad in it, the, the bike liner for the spokes or whatever. So they yeah, put, rim strip. The rim strip, yeah. So they put in some Gorilla tape around there instead. And I haven't had any more problems with that. And uh, the other day I had a problem with my brakes. They were kind of kind of loose. So I didn't, wasn't sure how to adjust those. And I, and I came by y'all at first, but I thought, you, you know, y'all used to be across the street. And, uh, and they were trying to hide from you. Yeah, I no. see. <laughs> I see. Uh, I have brought another bike over there before. Well, you're the whole reason we moved. <laughs> you still I found, found you. I found you. I guess we didn't play hide and go seek long enough. Yeah, I, I looked. I looked at them things. I know they gotta be a close to bike shop. I went to a Bike Barn and then Planet Cycle last time. And did they help you? They did. Well, they did with my brakes. Um, bike route? I mean, Bike Barn or Planetary? Or both. Both. They both helped me out. Well, they we all need, I mean, we all need business, so we all can't really turn people away. Right. Hopefully then you refer people oh, yeah. to us. Oh, now, yeah. sometimes trying to tell people prices over the telephone and then all of a sudden it's electric bike. Right. Because a lot of times taking wheels off because it's electric bike right. and that's is a little bit harder. Right. Most right. people understand that then they're you know, willing to pay a little bit more. Right. Because it's not a regular bike wheel. Right. So as long as people understand and mm -hmm. definitely, that's why I, like I, I put the caveat in there, like all right, the next thing is electric bikes, because uh, I know some places 
What? Well, in, in truing it, mm -hmm. now tinching in it, which is what I just did, uh -huh. in a way is a little easier than, than truing it. Okay. Because truing it, I have nothing to, I don't have a tool. Well, no, I don't oh. have a break. Oh. I don't have anything that guides me to make straight. I actually, again, I have to make something or I have to actually put my finger there. Right. See and this. have it straight uh -huh. where bikes with regular brakes uh -huh. we can use the brake right or we put it on that blue the caliper thing that blue u-shaped thing which is a truing stand right and but it probably doesn't go wide your though. wheel doesn't want to well, yeah. really fit right even though park and other companies are starting to make okay truing stands and things for electric bikes but right we really want to spend three or four or five hundred dollars for a truing stand right uh, and then look over my right shoulder and obviously this isn't super scientific okay but you see my fingers not moving okay and you see that wheel really straight that's good and then that just shows that me tensioning it isn't throwing it out it worked out right because okay, okay. i i paid attention to how much i tensioned it and then you quote feel the spokes Makes and they're sense. all about the same. Okay. That one might be just a hair looser. Okay. But they're all that's why about I, the same, which isn't the greatest way to figure this out, but sometimes you have to. Okay. Hello, you looking for your daddy? <laughs> that's why when I when I figured out what the problem was, I like let me go ahead and and uh Hey Ruby. You mind checking the front too? Just okay. to just just a they're a little creepy. Yeah, a built-in horn. <laughs> they don't make as much noise because obviously most Wait. of the weight's in the back. Yeah, because your butt weighs right. more than your hands. <laughs> right, and it's got that We're, big heavy But I normally motor. don't talk about men's butts. You know, <laughs> saying that on record now. Yeah, that's why I got a bike because I got a fat ass. I'm trying to get rid of it. La, 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 la. I don't need to hear any of that. <laughs> well, I want to know more about you, but not that. Uh, not like in a feminine way, but you know. I'm a little overweight, so. But the good thing is, this thing's got me wanting to get like, I think about getting like a, uh, what is the, a one, what do they call them, onesie or whatever, a one gear bike? A fixie. A fixie, there or we go. Or a single speed, that black, well that black one's a coaster brake, but oh, they'll, okay. they'll be, and we sell them. Yeah, um, so. And so one side will be a single speed, so you can actually coast. Mm -hmm. The other side is a fixie, so you can't coast. Oh. Uh, so like you talking about one of the pedals, one of the cranks, or the uh, the sprocket is double sided. Oh, I never heard of that before. I'll show. Sure, sure. Actually, so right here, you can actually coast. Okay. Oh. Now this side will make it a direct oh, drive. Oh, okay. It's so got sprocket on. You you're just going this. fast enough, it's gonna throw you up. Okay. And hopefully your reaction is gonna throw back on the seat, so you don't kiss the concrete. Oh, okay. Gotcha. We don't want to kiss concrete. Okay, I know that's so terrible. So that's a flip flop wheel. Okay. Now you could also do it with two different gearing ratios. So uh -huh. like on a windy day like today, you can take the wheel off, switch it around. Uh, okay. Because okay. on a windy day, uh -huh. you do kind of pay for not having any gears. So that's like riding this bike in one gear right. with no motor. Okay. That's you, no fun. I've done it. I mean. <laughs> You know, well, it's it has gears, but uh, yeah. it still is heavy. But, as hell. Well, but again, this bike yeah. would be lighter, but the yeah. same kind of principle. Right. Or it's, you know, what, it's what, walking what? at the same speed and not ever slowing down or speeding up, no matter if there's a hill, downhill, wind, no wind. So okay. it's. That bike typically is ridden a little bit shorter distances. Right. Um, and a lot for fun. Right. And to kind of break up the monotony of riding a bike even though you're still riding a bike i got you but again some people do ride it in town uh you know carry your carry your bicycle uh -huh. they ride it longer distances right. typically on the single speed side but some people do on the fixed side okay but typically it's a little shorter fun bike right people would ride it on the critical mass things like ah, that right right my friend got a, a red line not too long ago. It was like an oversized dirt bike, and it was it's a fixed gear, and it had like a real short, you know, like you couldn't once you get to a certain speed, you just like that's it. So he put a, a bigger gear ratio on it, and now it's hard as hell to start. But once you're rolling, yeah. And I rolled that thing like after he got the new gear on. I was like, man, like give me my bike back. <laughs> 
This thing wore me out so quick. And what a lot of people like about it is just simple. Right. I mean, there's not a lot to go wrong. Right. With the bike. Right. Perfect. See, that one's got a little wobble to it. Not much. And just for regular bike health, what things do I need to be like concerned about? Like I know the brakes, uh, keep my spokes good. The um, number one thing is air pressure. Air pressure, okay. It's the reel inside of the tire. And, and again, these are gonna be fairly low because they're, they're fat and flat. Uh -huh. um, where like the fixed seat, a lot of those can be 70, 80, 90 pounds. Right. Uh, but then so many people are like, oh no, that has to be wrong because my car only takes right. 45 pounds, so how can a bike tire take that much 70 difference. or 80 or 100? Uh -huh. And then they they don't believe in the company or the lawyer that made them <laughs> write it down on the side of the tire. Right, right, right. Um, and then air pressure loses 10% a week automatically. Does it? Mm -hmm. And I don't care. I even joke, even in bed under the covers with you. Because you know? <laughs> so, a lot of people goes, what if I hang it up? What if I put it in the garage? What if I put it upside down? What if I hang it on the wall? I, I know temperature has a, uh, something to do with it. Sure, the more, well, the more our temperature goes up and down, uh -huh. like it has been doing, uh -huh. then the more it does fluctuate. Um, does fluctuate air, or, you know. Moving it in, moving it in. Okay, yeah, the air. Okay, so that, I oiled my chain recently because so that, that hadn't been done before. Uh, too much. Too much, did I? I overdid it. Oh, well, what is it? I don't even want to tell you. <laughs> we're going to begin, we're, we're gonna begin the, this relationship on a lie? I use hair clipper oil. <laughs> like you put on like a edgers or whatever because that's all i, I have i've ever heard that the way to it's like wall made by wall or wall way too much and uh, probably way too thick okay you want to use a tri-flow a wd-40 that's actually for bicycles not right wd-40 from home not, depot not the penetrating kind um or um you know white lightning uh finish line makes some great product okay because again, so what should I do? Too now? much. Uh huh. It'll gunk it up. Too dry wears things out. Right. Too much wears things out. Too. Okay. And then again, you have a lot of guard here, but for a lot of people, then they end up getting it on oh. their calf. Oh, okay. And it shows. So for here, really, just start taking it off, taking it off, taking it off, okay. just wiping it. Okay. Down. Okay. And don't really put any more lube for a while, and just start cutting a lot of it off okay or taking it off okay oh, all right that's good but again good. lubing the chain is good uh -huh. but you got to use three in one oil or a bike lube not wd-40 from home depot or right. you know some people use car oil or motorcycle oil but uh -huh. bikes aren't going 50 60 miles an hour oh yeah for sure now what about any of the um derailleur and all that stuff does any, any of those parts need to be greased or will they be automatically oiled by the chain well from time to time it's always good to to lube the pivots the pivots okay once a year once every two or three years depending on how much and that's the spring area sweat right okay now the pulleys and everything gets lubed by the chain by the chain if somebody uses a really dry lube then they have to put in lube in the pulleys okay because most of these are bushings and there's not actually bearings in there okay most of the time when people use a wet lube like this then it's going to drip down in itself okay but if you use a, like a white lightning dry lube or a finish line dry lube then you got to spray your pulleys okay. or they're going to burn okay all right well that's good to know so it depends on it depends on the lube but when you use a dry lube dry loops you have to put on now how does it lubricate every 50 if it's dry to 200 miles well it lubes it like anything else but mm. it's so dry it doesn't last for a long time uh, okay where a wet lube 
is just basically thicker. Okay. So it just lasts longer. Okay. It can okay. be messier, but it lasts longer. I see. I see. So it's not literally dry, like you're putting powder on there. No, no, no. It's still, it's still it has a like alcohol liquid, in it or it's something. It's still a you know, liquid lube. Okay. Um, but it's really there to not to attract a bunch of dust and dust, dirt, dirt and, and grime. Oh, grime. Okay. And those are the people who are more anal retentive and okay. is going to do their lube on a regular basis. Okay. okay. Or then there's what they call medium lube mm. that's kind of not not super wet but not super dry. dry. Okay. And then that's a popular lube for a lot of people. Okay. All right. I just knew it was getting dry like after going on close to three months and I hadn't oiled it yet. And I, and I originally thought that's where the creaking noise was coming from. I was like, well, maybe my chain's a little dry. All right. So any other practical well, keeping bike know, maintenance. <laughs> keeping a wrench to the nuts and bolts and making sure that everything is tight. Okay. And then the other thing that you did that some people do, some people don't do, is pay attention to what the bike noises are. Uh huh. And then either figure out what the noise is. Uh huh. Or come to someone like us. Okay. That and then creaking, popping, squeaking. Those are all actually different sounds. Right. So trying to describe it the best you can, uh -huh. but pop and a squeak actually means two different things in our industry. Right, right, <laughs> right. That's the thing, like the, the spoke, they were cracking, they were popping, they were doing all, you know, lots of different things. You lots saw when you rub them together. They, that a creak. A creak, yeah. Because that, again, when you squeezed it, yeah. it's kind of creak. Creak, but, but then like when I'm rolling, it was actually popping too, like sure. sometimes like pop, you know, but yeah, I, I couldn't figure out what, to, I get off the bike, I look around, I'm like, what the hell is that, you know? And then I get back on it, then I finally kind of put it, and I was like, oh, okay, that's that's the spokes or whatever. So, uh, can I get your name? And I'm James. James, and we are? Houston Cycling Center's a Southwest location on Braveswood and Fun. Braveswood and Fun. That's Houston, Texas, for everybody out there in YouTube land mm -hmm. and the world. And uh, how much I owe you for this today? I'll ring you. Okay, cool. Um, how much will a, a wrench like that run you to? You have one of those? I'm sorry? The, the, the spoke wrench that you? You? So I do and I don't. Okay. Um, so each color is a different size. Right. So yours is. So I mean, they call that blue. Blue. Oh, okay. It, it doesn't now, have a size on there. Well, <laughs> ours is so old and it's, it's, they, it's worn they, off. Okay. Well, then I don't memorize their okay. their numbers. Like we could look under part tools. Okay. Now we sell a round one. The universal. And, Right. Okay. We don't say that you word very often in our business, but because <laughs> right. it gets us in trouble with okay. that one there. Okay. It's any size spoke. So if you came without the bicycle, okay. this is the only one I could sell you. Right. To know that it would fit because everybody wants to see standard or universal. Right. And that doesn't work in our business. No, it's not as easy to use. Okay. That's why I was going to ask you next. But it's a few dollars cheaper okay. and it's better than nothing. Okay. Okay. And how and much is that? Six bucks. Okay, I'll, I'll get that too. Big whopping six. All right. Um, how much for this? That is. I need something like that in my bag. Yeah, that is eight ninety nine. Eight ninety nine. Go ahead and throw that in too. Okay. Support your local bike shops, folks. <laughs> yes, right there. There we go. Three bike shops. Buy where you ride. Has closed last weekend. Really? Here in Houston? Uh, in oh. Houston. Three okay. closed on the same weekend. Oh, wow. That's terrible. We've had at least four to close this year. Mm. Mm. I thought y'all were gone, like, being that y'all moved. I was like, man. No, we're, not, we're just trying to hide <laughs> You're like, you don't want my business. <laughs> <laughs> we want everybody's business, actually. <laughs> All right. Okay. Okay, y'all. I'm back from the bike shop. They tighten up my spokes front and back. And uh, let me tell you, it makes a world of difference. I don't hear any of that creaking anymore. I'm, I can hear it now because I'm doing my hand. Plus the front ones, I don't put as much weight on the front. So didn't hear so much up there, but definitely in the back, they're nice and snug now. The bike you know, seems like it rides better. It seems snappier, more responsive, faster off the line. So shout out to the Houston, bike center 
I hope I got the name right. I'll post it up. Houston Cycling Center is a southwest location on Brazewood and Thunder. Especially to James who took care of me today. Kind of showed me how to, he didn't show me necessarily how to, well he did show me how to true up the tire, but also just tension the spokes more so than anything. Uh, the front tire looked like it had a little wobble to it. He kind of adjusted that, but for the most part, they're still pretty true and straight. See, I still got my pin ears on. So, yeah, uh, gave me some general maintenance pointers and stuff. So, very happy. As you can see, my bike got a little damage bang. That's all from putting it in and out of my car. Uh, but, yeah, it's not as pretty as some other people bikes I see XP because I actually <laughs> ride my bike quite a bit. You can see the tires are kind of worn down from riding but I uh, still got plenty of grip I love this thing that's my vlog for the day I'm, I'm a happy customer got some new tools for the bike uh, so to keep it in tip top shape and uh, I'll get back with y'all later peace